Hello guys. Today in this video, I will give you some general steps for any machine learning projects. So these steps will help you to have a clear approach in solving any machine learning problem. So as you guys know, machine learning is an iterative project, right? So the steps are iterative. Okay. So while doing multiple iterations, there is a possibility that you may get confused at any particular step. Okay. So if you follow the steps that I am going to jot down right now, it will avoid that confusion in a great way. Okay. So let's get started. <clears throat> Assuming that you have identified the use case and have collected the data required, below are the steps which will help you to get a better model. Okay. So <clears throat> before actually jotting down the steps, just remember one thing. As you gain experience for any given task and the data set at hand, you will be able to figure out one or two ML algorithms that would be doing a better job on it. Okay. But if you are just starting out with one or two projects, you need to follow these particular steps. Okay. So <clears throat> let's look at what are those what are those steps? Okay. So the first step. The first step is always data pre-processing. Okay. And this is a huge task actually, and this consumes more than 50 to 60 percent of the time that we invest in any machine learning projects. Okay. So, what are the steps involved? What are the sub steps involved in data pre processing that we will understand now? <clears throat> so, in order to have the data pre processing in a clear way, we need to first clearly understand the data set at hand. Clearly understand the task and data set okay so what do i mean by clearly understanding the data set you need to actually understand the dependency <coughs> between target and independent features for time being let us assume we all have the independent features with us okay <coughs> independent features then what's the next step once you have the data and you have understood the task you need to identify the missing values and handle them accordingly so missing values should be handled so that's the third step once you have identified and handled the missing values you need to handle the outliers <coughs> handle the outliers so what are outliers in simple terms outliers can be thought of as or understood as odd men out in a group of certain data okay so you need to handle them whether you need to remove them or it is there by mistake or you can modify them to bring into the group that is desired value with the desired value so you need to handle that so once you handle it you need to <coughs> handle the categorical features categorical features so what are categorical features which are not numbers all our machine learning or deep learning models require numbers as input, right? So we cannot have some text or anything other than number as our input to the machine learning models. So we need to handle this. In the next step, uh, the most important step probably is scaling the data. <coughs> scaling the data. When I say scaling the data, except the target variable, you may need to scale all the features that are present in the given data set. Okay, so there are two methods in scaling the data. One is using min max scalar when it comes to a scale on library, min max scalar, or you can do a normalization. So, this is actually called as standard scalar. Okay, so I will talk about the difference between these two maybe in my another video. Okay, so these are the two types of scaling the data. So once we scale the data, next another important step is to check the correlation within the data set. So what correlation tells you? So it gives you an idea whether all the features are actually independent or there is any multicollinearity and what are the important features th those which are influencing the value of the target variable so that idea you will get when you check the correlation okay so this is also another very very important step 
So next comes something called as feature engineering. Feature engineering. So for example, what when I say feature engineering, let's say we have certain set of features. So <clears throat> let's say in a data set, I have the person's date of birth, the year of birth, and we all already know the current year. So using these two things, you can derive a new feature called as age. Right. So, if this is not present in the given data set or the collected data that you have at your hand, you can create a new feature and then let the birth date go away. We can drop this birth date. So, this is just one of the examples for feature engineering. Okay. So, that's the next step <laughs> if at all it is required. <coughs> so, then the next step is once we are done with feature engineering, the most important step is feature selection. Okay, so these three things correlation, feature engineering, feature selection go hand in hand. Okay, so what do I mean by feature selection? So let's say we have 100 features in a given data set or the collected data set. All those 100 features may not be actually influencing the value of the target variables. Okay, so in that case, you need to carefully weed out the unnecessary features which would result in degrading the model performance in future <clears throat> okay so for that you need to follow some procedure so there are actually two ways in order for feature selection so one is forward selection the other one is backward elimination <clears throat> okay so i'll talk about these two things in detail in my other another video okay so these are the two steps or two types of feature selection. So once we are done with all these things, the next most important step in the data preparation is shuffling the data. Shuffle the data set. So why we need to shuffle this? So <clears throat> let's say the collected data set follows some sequence. It follows some order. So let's say if we are uh, collecting the heights or weights or salaries of all the employees in any organization. So let's say while collecting the data, we unknowingly first decide to collect all the salary details of male candidates. Okay. So first few records will always deal with male candidates. <clears throat> and then we go on collecting the data for female candidates. Right. So in this way, we are unknowingly, we will be unknowingly introducing the bias within the data set which will affect the model in a bad way. So what we have to do, we have to shuffle the data randomly so that we will have the good mix of different categories of the data that we have collected. So this is the most important step. So sometimes what happens if we have the data that is following specific sequence, unknowingly if we do not notice it and train the model. It will do good on training data set, but it will fail miserably on unseen data. So, <clears throat> a just simple tweak while training, if we just shuffle the data, the model performance would be improving in a greater extent. So, there is a chance for that as well, if we have a situation like this. So, shuffling the data is also another important factor. Okay. <clears throat> then, once we have done all this, the next step is to split the data into multiple blocks, split the data. So what are those uh, blocks in which we want to split? We want to actually split the data into three blocks. One is training set. <coughs> okay, we can call it as training data. The second one is validation data. The third one is test data okay so why we need to split into three blocks of different set of data in the given data set or the collected data set why on the training data set we will train our ml model train our ml model okay on the validation data set we will fine tune the parameter fine tune the model parameters on the test data, we will carry out the test. So, when I say test, we will evaluate the model. Evaluate the 
model. So this is generally also called as unseen data by the model. So the model has not seen this particular set of data. Okay. So this is the reason why we carry out the splitting of the given data set into three separate blocks. Okay. Now once these all things come under the heading of data pre-processing and famously this is called as EDA. So EDA stands for exploratory data analysis. Okay. So these are the, this is the first step that is data pre-processing. Okay. So there are, you can include another additional step called as statistical testing. So if one feature is more important than another feature or if you think that this can be solved without any ML in ML algorithm. You can have some statistical analysis and come to some conclusion. For that sake, you can carry out some, some or multiple statistical tests. So that also can be a part of EDA. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the first step in data pre-processing. This is the first step in any machine learning project. So once we are done with these data pre-processing steps, based on the task at our hand, we will go with the Second step. So let's say uh, we may be dealing with any of these tasks, right? We may be dealing with regression. We may be dealing with classification. Or we may be dealing with clustering. Correct? So each of these tasks have separate ML algorithms designed for those particular objectives. Right? So based on the task at hand, we will select more than one ML algorithm. More than one ML algorithm. So why we will select more than one ML algorithm? So what do we mean by selecting more than one ML algorithms? So in case of machine learning, when it comes to selecting the machine learning algorithms, if one M, one ML algorithm, let's say ML algo one, performs well on given data set one, the same machine learning algorithm may not do well on data set 2. Okay. So we cannot have something called as uh, what you can say the uh, very specific with we cannot go with a specific mindset, right? So this is very important ML algorithm and this is my favorite ML algorithm so that I will make use of the same algorithm in each and every task, right? So we cannot go with that particular mindset. So we should be open in applying any ML algorithm and selecting the best out of it. So for that sake, let's say we will select, uh, when I say select more than one algorithm, we will, let's say we'll select five or six ML algorithm for the task at hand that we have. Okay. So once we select this, we will train the model. Train these five or six ML algos on our training data set training data set while training also where we get this training data set in this particular step right uh, the last step of data preprocessing that is splitting the data so we will consider this particular block of data that is training data set right so for training also there is certain procedures that you need to follow so it's always better to follow nested fold cross validation cross validation but this is actually uh, generally this is computationally very expensive computationally expensive so when i say computationally expensive it will eat a lot of our time right so time consuming so if you have enough time you can go with usage of nested fold cross validation or if you do not have that particular time with you you can go for k fold cross validation cross validation so what this cross validation does this k fold cross validation it will take the supplied training data it will divide this data into multiple blocks k blocks okay so each of this block at each iteration will be used as train within that these all things are happening in training data okay 
So the training data again will be split into multiple blocks. So within that training data, one block of data, one sub block of data will be used for training and rest all data would be used for validating, validating the model. Okay. In this way, you can make use of K fold cross validation. So K will be deciding factor for how many blocks you will divide the given training data into. If it is five fold cross validation, the given training data will be divided into five fold. Okay. And if you are deciding to have 10 fold cross validation, the given training tab will be divided into 10 folds. Okay. So <clears throat> once you do this, once you train multiple five or six ML algorithms on the given data set using either nested fold cross validation or K fold cross validation, you will have results for all of these five or six ML models. Okay. So out of this, the next step is pick top two or three models okay so once you pick top two or, two or three models from this step two what you will do is you will do hyperparameter tuning hyperparameter tuning so this is also called as fine tuning the trained model okay so in for this hyperparameter tuning you will make use of validation set so once you train the model on training data set you will do the hyperparameter tuning again on training data set so what is this hyperparameter tuning so in this particular second step when i say you train the model you will train the ml algorithm with the default parameter values that it has it comes within the library sklearn or if you are using any other library it all the parameters have their own default values so you will train all the models on default values in this third step you will specify a set of values for each of the parameters okay and then you will try to find out the best parameters among the provided set of values okay so this is usually done with cv something called as cv so i will talk more about this when i will be implementing a project by following all these steps okay so that video will come out soon you will learn and enjoy the process okay so once you do the hyperparameter tuning on training data set you will eval you will check its performance on validation data set and then finally evaluate the model evaluate the model on test data set okay so which model you will choose and what will be the parameters the parameters will be chosen while doing hyperparameter tuning so you will get some best parameters out of this process and you will be making those set of parameters to evaluate the model on the test data set or unseen data set okay so once you do the testing if you are happy with the result so that is if model is performing good on training data and also on unseen test data so you have some metrics right so let's say if we are dealing with regression problem uh, let's say we are talking about r square score r2 score r2 or r square score and on training data we obtain 0.96 and on test data we obtain 0.94 so this is actually a good model okay if i name this as model 1 so this is a good model so if i have another model called as model 2 and it is giving me 0.99 r2 score on training data set and 0.75 on test data set this is not a good model this why because this is actually overfitting the training data overfitting the training data so if we have multiple models like this we need to have low bias and low variance so that we can pick that model as our go to model okay so basically out of all the five or six models or top two or three models that we pick we will pick that particular model after hyperparameter tuning the model which has low bias and 
low variance. So this will be the criteria to select the good model or the required model. So if you are happy with the result, you can stop the process at this particular step. If you are not happy, you can do some experimentations. So that will be your fourth step. You can do some experimentations. So what would be those experimentations? Maybe you can use different techniques, different technique for outlier detection. Okay. And once you detect it, you may be <coughs> able to choose a different way to handle those outliers. Okay. So that would be some kind of experiment. The second experiment would be a different trying out a different set of features. Okay. So trying out different feature set. Okay. And then <coughs> it all depends upon the steps that we have taken in data pre-processing step, right? So there are multiple steps and you can Try to, for example, the third experimentation would be to choose a different scaling method. Okay. So let's say you have used minmax scaler in SQLN library to scale the data features. Uh, in this experimentation, you can try using normalization technique in order to bring down the values of the data in the same range. Right. So these are some methods, alternate methods, which you can do for experimentation and then repeat all these steps again uh, uh, select five or six ml algorithms train the base models so these are actually called as base models so whatever we do in second step the output after the training will be called as base models and in the third step we will improvise these base models by doing a hyperparameter tuning okay so these are the steps which you need to follow this looks like a lot but Trust me, this is the actual process. If you follow it, you will not miss out on anything and you will not forget your way in between while doing this continuously in multiple iterations. Okay. So this is the these are the steps descriptively. So if you want me to give it in a flowchart way, so it's simple. So the first step is data pre-processing. Okay. So this has multiple steps associated with it. Next step is fit the base model. Fit the base models. So you try out multiple machine learning algorithms and fit the base models. Why I am saying them as base models? Because we will make use of default parameter values. Parameter values. So once we do this, once we have the base models, Pick the top two or three models. Pick top two or three models and subject it to hyperparameter tuning. Hyperparameter tuning. So once you do this, the output or the resulting models would be called as tuned models. Okay. So here we will get the base models. The output after hyperparameter tuning are called as tuned models. Once we get the tuned models, you will evaluate the model on test set. Evaluate on test set. So test set or unseen data set. Okay. So this is the simple or concise flowchart which covers all these steps here. Okay. So I will draw this flowchart in a better way and try to give it in the description of this video. So if you have any questions, please reach out to me in comment section or if you want me to change the approach or if you find any mistakes in any of my videos, please feel free to point them out. It will help me to learn and also correct while helping you to learn. Okay. So that's it for this video guys. Hope you learned something new. If you are liking the content, please give it a thumbs up and please share it among your peers so that it will help them also to learn okay so if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe till we see in the next video happy learning bye bye